there! Welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is Eyeshadow Palette Month, and we're going to be talking about my eyeshadow palette wish list. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be a bit of an eyeshadow palette wish list. I talk to you about what makeup releases stand out to me every single month, and some of that ends up in a wish list, and some of it just kind of is forgotten after I've mentioned it in the video, but when things actually make it onto my wish list because they kind of keep, you know, I kind of keep them in my brain and then after a while I'm like, okay, I really need to sort of now try and make an effort to try and hunt these down. Uh, sometimes I buy things straight away, but very often I actually wait a couple of weeks or sometimes months before I actually take the decision to buy something. So I thought I could take you along for the thought process and chat to you out, I think it's about 10 or 11 palettes that I hope to be purchasing in the next couple of months. If you don't know what this channel is all about, hi, my name is Micah, I live in the Netherlands, I have fair skin with a cool neutral undertone, been reviewing makeup for more than a decade, and I love eyeshadow palettes, so... I hope you're here for it and hope you would like to consider subscribing. There's a very, very particular reason why I would like to um, sit down and film this video because a lot of people have been recommending a website to me called Monolith. If you are also located in the European Union, it may, may be good to know that if you're interested in US indie brands that quite a few of them by now are available through this website called Monolith. And a lot of you have told me that you have great experience with them, but I've never used them before because very often I just buy it directly from the brand um, because I can actually use my AdSense money towards making these purchases. So sometimes I don't really mind it, um, but I was like, you know what? I want to make an effort to try and see what they have on offer. So I was browsing that website and then a couple of other palettes kind of popped into my head. And I was like, you know what? I think these are things I may want to purchase. Now, this is definitely sort of a um, hypothetical video in the sense that I haven't placed these orders yet. There's new makeup being announced on the daily, so maybe something else comes up in the next couple of weeks or months before I purchase these that I want to have more, and then maybe this is forgotten again, and I don't think about it anymore, because that's what happens a lot with all of these new makeup releases, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, a lot of it I just forget about, and I'm like, that's that's sort of been my proof of evidence, you could say, that I don't need to buy it, because if I forget about it that quickly, it just wasn't impressive enough. But these are all things that I've sort of come back onto the surface, some of it is a bit newer, and I'm like, you know what? I think I want to try these. So first things first, this palette is currently unavailable, so I think I'm gonna have to wait for it to come back as a pre-order. I did put in my information to be notified when it does come back. And this was completely instigated by Erica Conger here on YouTube. She showed this in the recent video, she did her birthday haul, and I was like, oh yeah, I nearly bought this palette last year and then decided last minute not to get it but I think I still want to try this, and it's the Notoriously Morbid Rusted Essence Palette. It now comes in other palettes, uh, in other packaging that I did last year, so it's now called the Green Rusted Essence Pressed uh, Palette, but I do think that the shades inside it are exactly the same as it was last time. So Notoriously Morbid is one of those smaller uh, US-based indie brands. Not a lot of people chat about them, and they just don't have that many products. It's a lot of liquid lipsticks and things like that, I believe. Um, and they have this more like darker aesthetic, which I sometimes enjoy. I love my grunge, we all know that. And the Notoriously Morbid Green Rusted Essence Palette, I just think is one of those things where, you know, especially around Halloween time, I think it's very pretty. Um, so it's ve very much a fall palette for me, so I hope it comes back soon and that I might be able to purchase it. It's not super expensive in terms of the actual price for the palette itself. I think it retails for about $25, which for an eyeshadow palette is actually quite reasonable. Of course, I would have to pay for shipping and handling fees, and that's the main reason why I didn't buy it last time, because I was like, oh, I've already bought so many palettes this year, do I need another one? And I decided against it, no. But now that I s I've seen it again, I'm like, mm, yeah. I would, I would like to try this, and it would be a new-to-me brand that I haven't tried before. Another new-to-me brand that I haven't tried before is the Ensley Rain Midwinter Dream Palette in collaboration with Brittany Huffman, I think it's called, or Brit Huffman, I'm not sure what the creator is called. And this, I spotted on Monolith, actually. I was just browsing the website, trying to see what they had, 
And this is on, out of stock on there, but it is in stock directly from the brand. But this is an expensive palette, which is which is kind of why I'm 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 just not really sure I want to get it because it's a brand I've never tried before. It does seem to have a lot of multi-chrome, so that's probably why it is so expensive. I think it retails for around 90 euros. So this one I'm like, mm. it does have I think 18 shades. It's quite a big palette though as well. But it's got such lovely cool tones and these this is just completely my vibe with these grayish undertones that it seems to have some interesting sparkle and it's kind of what i live for at the moment so i'm, I'm a bit torn if you've tried ensley rain and you've had an experience with them can you please let me know is this good quality makeup or not because the swatches look amazing only this is one of those brands that i just haven't heard a lot of people talking about and i know nothing about them they seem to be more like an etsy style brand i'm not sure if that's if i'm correct there but that's sort of the vibe i'm getting like sort of more homemade um i'm not sure if that's the case maybe these are made in the in in china like a lot of indie brands are nowadays um, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure whether I should bite the bullet on this one. Um, this is definitely one of the things I definitely need to have a think about, but I saw this and I was like, Ooh, that is exactly the kind of eyeshadow palette I like. So maybe, maybe this gets and ends, ends up being purchased at some point. Maybe not. I'm not sure on this one yet. Another thing I'm not that sure of is the Bella Beauté Bar Smoky Glam Palette. So when this was announced, I remember featuring this actually in one of my new makeup releases saying I may want to get this. And I'm still kind of on the maybe side of it and not like definite yes. Again, more of an expensive product. These palettes retail for about $70. Um, again, not a palette currently available on Monolith, but the brand is stocked on there. I just couldn't find this particular palette on there yet, or maybe it was out of stock. I remember, I, I've forgotten what, which it was. It is still in stock with the brand itself, so I could get my hands on it if I'm willing to pay the shipping and handling fees. And that's, I think, where the drawback also lies, because this palette is huge. It's a book. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know how many shades. It's like over 40 shades, I think. And it's just a bit much for me because I know it's just going to have a lot of repeat shades. Um, but a lot of people have been raving about them and saying how good their quality is. And so many creators, I've seen this ranking really high in their mid-year rankings. And it's more of a cool tone palette, but this is another reason why I'm sort of on the maybe side of things. Because I've seen pictures of this, and I've seen creators featuring in their videos, and it looks very, very cool toned. But then I go to the website, and I look at the images the brand has of the palette itself, and it looks very warm toned. So it's more like berry leaning rather than like grays and purples. And because it was more cool tone, that's of course the reason why I would want to get it. So A, it's big. Two, I can't really find reliable pictures of what this might actually look like. Plus it's expensive. So uh, This is why I'm on the fence. Uh, again, Bella Beauté Bar is not a brand I've tried before. Uh, maybe I should try them. Maybe if you've tried them, you can let me know if it's worth it or not. Um, because I'm, I'm just a bit torn on this one. It, it seems to have a lot of things going for it so it may just be one that i need to bite the bullet on and try and try it at some point this year but this is definitely one where i'm like if i find something else that comes out that i like better this is going to be scratched from the list um in, in case you don't know uh, i review about five to ten palettes every month that's sort of the aim um but i've definitely tried to slow down how many palettes i bring in new and i've actually haven't bought a single palette uh, all summer. Um, I think I, the last time I bought an eyeshadow palette was like in May. Uh, so I haven't bought an eyeshadow palette in a while. Um, so that's, that's, you know, just because I knew, oh wait, if I add it all up, I'm, I'm pretty much seeing, like I will have enough to review until October. So anything that I buy right now goes into like October, November, December reviews. And I just would like to try and aim for trying everything that I buy within a year to try it within that year. That's that's sort of what I try to do now, or at least very close together. And that's why I have been holding off of some things. 
Then the Cosmic Brushes eyeshadow palette. So I tried the Cosmic Brushes Serenity palette, which blew up last year, and I was able to get my hands on it. I really like the quality. It's blue, greens, and purples, and I love it. The brand has come out with two new palettes since then, the Muse and the Delicious Delights. So the Delic Delicious Delights is more of like your tradi traditional rainbow with some pastels and brights. This brand, again, doesn't put a lot of uh, shimmers in their palettes, which if you know anything about me, I prefer a shimmer over a matte. I don't need that many mattes in my collection. So that's been a reason why I'm sort of like still sort of still looking at it from a distance, but not something I need to try because I've already tried the formula and I know I like it. And where I used to be that sort of collector of, I like this palette, I know I love this formula, I need to try it all, like Pokemon, gotta catch them all. Um, I've sort of stepped away from that mindset because once I've tried a palette, I've tried a brand, I don't need to get everything if it's not 100% what I know I'm gonna go for. And that's why I haven't purchased these yet, but I sort of go between these two from time to time. I look at it and I go like, oh, the Muse does look really pretty. It's more neutrally leaning. It's got a bit more grunge. So that could be really pretty. It's like an amped up version of the Alien Cosmetics Fall Magic, which is like one of my favorite palettes of all time. So maybe I should just get this. These, uh, these palettes aren't super expensive. They're like 22 pounds, I think. It's like 25 euros for a 20 pan eyeshadow palette. They're based in the UK, so the shipping and handling fees aren't too, too terrible, I feel. Even though since Brexit, we do have to pay for those extra costs at customs, though. Um, so yeah, maybe get these. Um, they just did a really small restock uh, as I'm filming this. Um, so maybe by the end of summer, they're gonna do another restock and they may have a bit more. And then just get the two that I don't have. I'm not sure yet on this one, or maybe just the Muse. I think I'm going to get the most use out of the Muse compared to these two. But then again, I haven't tried a lot of fun, bright, colorful eyeshadow palettes in a while. And the Delicious Delights is like the first bright palette to have come out in years that has sparked my interest and it makes me go like, ooh, that's something I may wanna try even though I'm not a bright, colorful kind of person at all. So that's why I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I know some of you have tried these and I know some, a lot of you love this brand. So I might wanna get this, but I'm not sure yet. Then something that I know I'm gonna get for sure is the new Gloss Gots Color of Rain All Shimmer Palette. <laughs> I'm going to be purchasing this for sure. Um, this, I thought when it was launched, I looked up the price point and I put it through a currency converter and it came up as being double the price of one of the uh, Gloss Gots palettes I already owned. It was like mm, 70 plus euros for a 12 pen palette, maybe a bit much. But then I found out when they were actually listed on their website and I could convert it to euros on their website that it wasn't. So I think the price that was listed on Instagram in Swedish crowns was for the two palettes together rather than for the one because they launched two palettes in one go. So this Color of Rain palette, I have their Dancing in the Sky, which is their all shimmer palette with gr more of a green undertone. The Color of Rain is that concept with, with a blue level underneath it. Um, and I just think this looked absolutely gorgeous. I love the Gloss God Shimmer formula. It's outstanding. And I just know this is going to be one of the things I'm going to be purchasing by the end of this month. When I do my eyeshadow palette collection, I will not have this in yet, I think. Um, but I will definitely be purchasing this at the end of August. And then the next palette is gonna be depending on how I feel about the palette already owned by this brand. So I mentioned this palette recently in one of my new makeup releases videos, and it's the LH Cosmetics Aim Higher eyeshadow palette. The LH Cosmetics brand is run by a makeup artist from Sweden called Linda Hullberg, and her brand is available from Lico, which is actually quite advantageous for, to me because they do ship internationally and their shipping and handling fees are really not that terrible. I think if I buy just the one palette, I would get free shipping. Um, her palettes are quite expensive though for what you get. I bought the Daybreak palette, I believe that's what it's called, and I haven't used it yet, which is why I've put this what, trying the Aim Higher palette on the back burner, 
The Daybreak palette is going to be part of the August palette review that I will be doing, so I'm trying it out this month. If I like it, then I'm going to be buying the Aim Higher for sure, because it's lovely cool tones, more of a taupey vibe, even more so than the Daybreak, which is more like grays with purples and blues. Um, so I think the Aim Higher is very much my cup of tea. Here's the reason why I've held off of it. Once I got the Daybreak in, because this was the only palette the brand had released that really sparked my interest, and I just, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna cave. I needed a couple of Catrice bits that were on there. I was like, oh, I'll pop the palette in there and get the free shipping and I can try a new to me brand. And then I got it in and I swatched it and I wasn't impressed. For a nine pen that retails for 44 euros, I was not impressed. So I just wanted a bit more perhaps. I'm still hoping and that, you know, when I put this on my eyes and I'm going to be wowed by it, by it and it's some of the best eyeshadow quality I've ever tried, I've learned because I've been reviewing makeup for such a long time that just a finger swatch is never good information on how good the palette actually is, which is what irks me so much. Like everybody always wants to see finger swatches. Finger swatches are very satisfying to look at. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It tells you nothing about performance once you use brushes. It just doesn't. Um, so yeah, I'm still holding out hope that the Daybreak palette is going to be pleasing to me and that that just makes sure that I want to buy this as well. But until I've tried that palette and until I've made up my mind about how I feel about the Daybreak, I don't feel comfortable spending another 44 euros on a palette that I just feel very lackluster about in terms of quality, not the color story. The color story is right up my street. Another palette that I think I may actually wanna buy at the end of August is going to be the Be Perfect Gravity palette. This is another cool tone palette that I have talked about in a recent new makeup releases video. It was released around the same time as the LH Cosmetics one. And I've never tried Be Perfect. They are known for their really, really large rainbow-like color stories that they've done in collaboration with Stacey Marie. And the same reason for why I'm still sort of umming and ahhing about the Bella Beauté bar, it's just too big. But now they've come out with this, I think it's an 18 pan or a 15 pound palette. That's pretty much cool tones. That makes me go like, hmm, if I were to try Be Perfect, this would be the palette for me. So that's why I'm thinking maybe I should try this. I've just run into a really big problem. I can barely find this at a retailer that ships to my location. The only retailer I found currently is the European version of the Be Perfect official website. That's what I found, but I'm not sure what they're gonna charge me in terms of shipping and handling, like the actual shipping costs I can see, but I'm not sure whether that's going to, you know, have another fee on top of it in terms of like a customs charge. And their shipping was around like 10 pounds or something, which, you know, is not horrible, but it does mean that the palette goes from the 20 euros it is on Beauty Bay, I can see it on Beauty Bay, but I can't put it in, in my shopping cart because it doesn't ship to my location. Um, or, you know, pay the 30 euros that it would be with the shipping fee and then I don't know whether I'm going to be hit with customs on top of it. So that would make a fairly affordable eyeshadow palette a lot more expensive. Now Be Perfect is a brand that is sold in the Netherlands through Boozy Shop, but the, the palette isn't on there. So I haven't been able to find this anywhere where I can get it for a reasonable price point and Be Perfect is not the kind of brand where I'm like, you know what, I wanna try you this desperately that I'm willing to pay twice the amount of money for the palette to, in order to try it. Um, I don't think, I don't feel that passionate about this color story. I just don't. Um, so maybe the Be Perfect Gravity palette may be something I can add or you know, make a purchase um, with in the next couple of months if it does become more widely available. I'm not sure whether this is limited edition and that's why it's a bit harder to get. Uh, I don't know. If you know of any other places that stock Be Perfect that do ship to the Netherlands and that don't charge terrible shipping fees, then just let me know. And then the monolith order that I know I'm going to be purchasing, like I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm pretty set that this is going to be my makeup purchase for like August, September. Um, so with my, the 
Let me see. The AdSense money that comes in this month from August, I'm going to be purchasing these palettes. That's the way I should explain it to you um, because that's the way I've been doing this all year. If I wanna buy new makeup, I look at how much I get in in terms of AdSense and that's what I put towards purchasing new makeup. So the monolith uh, order that I wanna place is for the new Fantasy Cosmetica fighter palette. So this I almost purchased from the from the brand's website, but then I was browsing Monolith and I saw them on there and all of their palettes were out of stock. So I did contact the brand on Instagram to ask them, will your new palette come to Monolith? And they said, yes, it's currently making its way to their facilities, but it's going to be a couple of weeks until they can list it on there. So I'm hoping it's going to be there by the end of August and then I can place this order provided the other palettes that are still currently in stock are still in stock. Um, because that Fantasy Cosmetica palette is just looking stunning. It is a bit more warm toned, but it's a very grungy vibe and I'm just here for the grunge. It's It looks like such a great fall palette that I just, I just, I just wanna get this. I just know I do. I love the Fantasy Cosmetica um, uh, formula. I've tried their Rogue palette, I've tried their Druid palette, and I've loved both. So I know I'm going to like this one as well in terms of quality. But the other palettes that are currently still in stock are the Blend Bunny Lure palette. And Blend Bunny is a, is a brand that's on Monolith that isn't marked up greatly. You definitely need to sort of do your research if you wanna shop through there. Cause for some brands like Adept, it doesn't matter whether you get them through Monolith or whether you get them through the Adept website because some of them are marked up so greatly that if you factor in the shipping and handling fees that you need to pay getting it from the US, you're gonna spend as much money. There are a couple of brands where the retail price through Monolith is the retail price you would pay for if you were to live in the US uh, with some indie brands and Blend Bunny is one of them. And the lore, it kinda, it, it's still luring me in pardon the pun, but it kind of still is. It's got green, blues, and purples. I believe it's got some pinks in there as well. I've tried Blend Bunny already. I know I quite like their formula. I wish they would do some more shimmers, but just for the fact alone that this is the kind of colorful color story that always draws me in, I think I do wanna own this from the brand and it is currently still for the exact same price point as it goes for on the Beauty, uh, Blend Bunny website. It is listed on Monolith, so I feel pretty comfortable paying that money for this palette. Then a brand I've never tried is Clarity Cosmetics. Their palettes are also a little bit on the expensive side, which is why I've never tried them before. But one of the palettes that I've, I've, I'd eyed in the past, but that I didn't buy, um, because it was just going to be a bit too expensive for me to get it from the US. And Clarity Cosmetics is one of those brands where I've heard very mixed reviews of people who love the brand, and also people who really didn't like the quality. But their Evil Mermaid palette, those bluey, tealy greens with those minty pastels, it just, it's calling my name. I like the concept of this brand a lot, but I think if I just try something a little bit more curated, maybe if I like it a lot, that I can get their new Apocalypse palette, which is also a monolith, but that's 70 euros, which I find a bit much, and they do these humongous pans, which, I don't necessarily need, uh, but they do some really interesting color stories. So if this one purchase is going to be successful, I may dip my toes into this brand a bit more, but I definitely would like to try them. And then last but not least, and here's, this is really a big question mark, is this still going to be in stock or not? But the Glam Light Chucky palette. So they did a Chucky collaboration um, for Valentine's Day it was, I think. And I kind of, I'm not even sure whether I mentioned this in a new makeup releases because it was released at this awkward moment in time where I had just filmed my video and then I kind of just forgotten about it because I didn't feel it appropriate to talk about the Valentine's Day palette in March. So that's why it kind of crossed, I think it got lost in the shuffle somehow. But I've heard a couple of creators talk about how they really enjoy this palette. It's very deep and sultry. It's got some shades that I think I already have in my Melt Waiting Room palette, but it could be nice to be able to see how the two brands compare. And Glam Light is a brand that I haven't tried in a while. I tried their Birthday Cake palette, or the Cake palette I think it's called, uh, a couple of years ago, back when it was super popular and everybody was putting it as like, in their top three favorite palettes of the year in like 2018 or 2019. And I didn't like it at all. For me, it was like one of my least favorite palettes I had ever tried because I didn't like the shimmers. 
So now I'm like, this color story has me intrigued. A lot of what Glam Light does just doesn't intrigue me. They did the Michaela palettes, part one, part two. They've done, they've done a lot of IP brand collabs with things like Hershey's and like a lot of food things as well, because that's what they started out doing. They did like pizza palettes and burger palettes and that was their spiel at first. Um, and they've definitely been collaborating with some of these foodie kind of brands and none of it has really, really sparked my interest. But this Chucky palette, I'm like, I, th I think I might like that. So yes, it's a bit deep, dark and sultry, but since I would be purchasing it when we're going into fall, I think it may actually be a good purchase, but I actually think that that's also going to be why it's going to disappear from the website really soon. Um, because I think a lot of people may want to get their hands on this for Halloween. So hope it's still there by the time I'm able to place my purchase, but for the time being, I won't know. So this is sort of what I'm hoping to get my hands on in the next couple of months. Um, I definitely won't be buying this in one go. I'll be buying like a few palettes here and there every month, um, depending on how much AdSense I make, really. Um, so that's the plan for now to be buying those things. It's mainly indie stuff. Um, and that's the thing with indie brands, I definitely sort of have to think about things a bit longer, especially if it's a brand I've never tried. I really want to make sure that I budget for that very carefully and that I just don't buy it willy nilly and then be stuck with a palette that I don't love. Um, because you're just never really sure whether you're going to like it or not. So that's what I wanted to share with you in today's video. Let me a comment down, leave me a comment down below to let me know what palettes you hope to be picking up very soon. I would love to know. I hope you're here for eyeshadow palette month and that you would like to stick around for more content because I'm doing a little bit more content than I usually do. And of course I have a lot of other exciting videos coming your way. So I'd be like, stay tuned for that for now. Take care, have a great day. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.